got a master's in statistics, and she was the role model in my life for what we need to do for all of us to make sure that, particularly as men, that we are breaking the barriers for gender equality and making our society, our community, equal for all. Thank you. do you think uh, you can do and, and the community can do to address this issue? Well, I think that the first thing is, is making sure that it is a priority. Uh, for example, I don't think that we should have given any tax breaks to any corporate interest until they actually made a commitment, a real commitment, to hire more women and people of color. Yeah. Uh, but let me talk about women, because I actually think that this is a very important issue because of what's happening, not only in San Francisco, but at the national context. You know, for the last two and a half years, we have been working with Planned Parenthood because we have a Planned Parenthood clinic in my district. And these extremists, anti-choice extremists, have been intimidating women as they're going into this clinic, intimidating the workers who are there, and they're scared. And I'm proud that we work with Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood to pass legislation to protect them. Because I believe that if we cannot protect a woman's right to choose in San Francisco, then the entire country is in deep trouble. And let me, let me also say that it's not just about healthcare, even though that's important. I think it's about providing economic opportunity to women. I am proud that we work with women of color like the Colectiva de Mujeres, Mujeres Unidas y Activas, so that we actually provide low-income immigrant women of color the opportunity to actually make a living. And I am proud that it was my assembly member, Tom Amiano, that made history by passing the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights. That was an important step, but we need to do much more. And I am proud to have the support not only of teachers, but of women organizations of the Cal like the California Nurses Association, because they know that this is a real commitment on my part. Part of uh, what I've been proud of in my record of being able to move forward is helping women entrepreneurs who are running small businesses in our city move things forward. Uh, we have not, as a city, help the lifeblood in our commercial quarters. And I have passed several pieces of legislation to make sure that our city contracting dollars are going to our diverse firms that are one run by women in particular, run by women of color. I was also proud to change the rules to make sure that more city contracts were going to companies that were providing socially philanthropic and socially responsible services to our community. Thank you. Many of these companies were run by women. And the High Speed Rail Project. Uh, which has been mired in both politics and legalese and um, no, no. fights. So do, you, do you support the project? And if so, how will you work in Sacramento to make it happen? Let me say that uh, I know that there are probably some differences of opinion here, but I do think that our uh, transportation future as a state requires that high speed rail be a component of that. And, and I am proud of the work that I have done on the MTC representing the city and county of San Francisco to make sure that this project moves forward and specifically that we in Northern California get our act together because a lot of the money that was uh, provided uh, on the early stages of the project went to Southern California. We need to make sure that we get our fair share. There has been a recent ruling that actually limits uh, the possibility of funding in terms, in terms of the accessibility of federal funds. I think it's a bump in the road. I think that if we make this a priority in the state legislature, that we, we can find the money uh, for it. But I also think it's about accountability. I think it's about transparency in how we run this project. I think that part of the challenge has been that the $63 billion that it's going to cost to build this a lot of people don't know where the money is going to go. I mean, we certainly don't know where all of it is coming from. So I think that we need to make that transparency a requirement of anything that happens. I also think that with San Francisco, we need to make sure that the downtown extension is a priority so that high-speed rail doesn't end at Fort and King, but actually goes to downtown San Francisco where it's the most needed. Thank you. So I have been told I'm a bit unique among elected officials in that I, like many of you here in this room, do not own a car. 
I got here today on my bicycle over the last 48 hours. I have taken a unit. I have used my city car share, uh, and I have attempted to hail cabs. Uh, I absolutely support figuring out how we build Husky Rail, but I think the vision is actually greater than that. I think it's important that we have more regional solutions to transit. We need to make sure, for example, we have a BART system that goes all the way down to San Jose. We need to make sure that high-speed rail does connect us in two and a half hours from San Francisco to Los Angeles. And I also happen to think we need to have bus rapid transit all over San Francisco. Now, in order to get this done, though, it's going to take an enormous fight because we are going off a transportation funding cliff. In fact, a year ago, I helped to convene a city task force of about 60 experts in this area. We calculated we need about $10 billion in the coming years to fix all that we need to get fixed. And in fact, at the state level, because Proposition 1B money is drying up, we need tens of billions of dollars around the region to get all of this done which means that we need leadership that's going to be effective at actually being able to pull people together. I was proud a few years ago to champion an increase, bringing back a vehicle license fee that Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger gutted in 2003 that eliminated $6 billion of funding to our state. And I want to go to Sacramento to make sure that we're championing these types of measures because every person in San Francisco deserves to have a way to get around our city so that you can all get to work, we can all get to school, we can all see our families. Thank you. I think two things are needed in public transportation. It has to be more accountable. Yes, it is an issue of resources, but how many people here uh, think that the MTA, that Muni is doing a bang up job? About three years ago, David, I asked you to join my efforts to have a ballot measure to reform the way Muni is managed so that the people, the riders, actually have more, more of a say on the decisions that they make. You did not support it. Thank you. And I think that I've been proven right that Muni is not working. Yeah. So one of the big uh, fights in, in Sacramento has been over uh, or at least discussions in recent years has been over a tax on oil extraction. Um, so I'd love to hear why you both think that hasn't gotten through yet, and if it were to be pushed through, um, how should that additional funding be spent? So I think the reason it hasn't gotten through, pure and simple, is that the oil industry has had a chokehold on politics in Sacramento, and we need to have independent <coughs> elected officials who are going to sac go to Sacramento uh, and make sure that our state does what other states have been doing and making sure that we are bringing in fair revenues when it comes to our oil industry. I was proud a few weeks ago that the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, and I want to thank David Campos for his support of my resolution to call, call for a halt, a moratorium when it comes to fracking in the state of California. And from my perspective, I have worked with environmentalists in the city to make sure that we are taking on industries that are doing us wrong, whether it be the plastic water bottle industry. Part of the reason why I'm not drinking out of plastic water bottles, I recently proposed that we phase out plastic water bottles on public properties. This is a fight. This is a fight that a $60 billion industry is already starting to train their guns on here. Uh, I was proud to take on the yellow pages industry. That was uh, an enormous fight. We were able to get that over the line, over the opposition of the business community, over the opposition of the Chamber of Commerce. I have passed half a dozen first in the country pieces of legislation in the environment, setting the stage, for example, making sure that in our nail salons we're phasing out toxic chemicals. Thank you. Dan. All of these have been imposed by industry, and we need a leader who is experienced at doing this and getting yeah. this done. What would you do with the money? Well, I think that the money should be used for environmental purposes. And one of the things that I'd like to see is actually for our school system to get some of that because we have to start with a young generation. But, but let me say this, that I, 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 I agree with what David said, but I think it's one thing to say that you're going to stand up to the oil industry and to special interests. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to, to do it. 
And the question that I have is, you know, which David Chu is going to go to Sacramento? Is it the David Chu that in 2008 was elected to the Board of Supervisors, elected president as a progressive? Or is it the David Chu that two years later switched sides and actually uh, finagled his re-election with moderate support? Which David Chu is it? The thing about David Campos is that you know where David Campos stands. David Campos is not afraid to stand up to companies like Twitter to say, you know what, it's wrong for you to get that tax break. David Campos is not afraid to stand up to PG&E and say, we need community choice aggregation in San Francisco to end the monopoly of PG&E once and for all. David Campos is not afraid to stand up to the Chamber of Commerce and say, it is wrong for you to steal money from consumers and deprive workers and their families access to health care. David Campos is not afraid to do that because David Campos comes from a place where I know what it's like to have nothing, to be an underdog. And the people that I care about are the people who don't have the money to pay the lobbyists in Sacramento, but they are the ones that ultimately elect us. Doesn't matter what the special interests say, if you have the will, there is a way. in 2008, I told voters that I would, thought that it was important for us to figure out how City Hall could be less dysfunctional, to pull people together, to hammer consensus, and get things done. And that is exactly what I've done. And in fact, in 2008, I said, I believe it is progressive for us to be creating jobs, for us to be building housing, for us to be moving our city forward in that way. And I've been proud to deliver on that. And unfortunately, David Compass and I just have a difference of opinion and what it means for us to be able to move our city forward in a vision of where we want San Francisco to go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna have a two minute closing statements now. We'll start with Supervisor Campos. Thank you everyone and thank you David. Uh, I look forward to more of these conversations. Uh, let me say this, you know, uh, I do have to pinch myself uh, because it will be 29 years on the 31st of this month that my mom, who was carrying my sister Olga and I was carrying my sister Judith, were standing across the fence that divides Mexico from the U.S. And I could see the lights on the other side, on the U.S. side. And for me and my family, those lights meant everything. They meant the world. And I say that because, you know, we have our differences. We both love San Francisco. But as an immigrant who comes from a place where someone like me could not get anywhere in that society in Guatemala, we, I recognize how special this country is. And not only this country, but especially San Francisco. And I am running for office because I believe in America and I believe in San Francisco. And it really hurts me that young people, and we're here at the Young Democrats, that young people in this day and age cannot get the break that they need to use their talent to actually live up to their maximum potential. There is something happening to our city, to our country, where we're losing what made us great. And I am running for this office because I believe that this city is a great city, but that unless we change its course and we stop rolling out the red carpet to corporate interests and actually taking care of our own, things are not going to be what they should be. I believe in San Francisco. I join you to join this, to, I ask you to join this campaign. This campaign is about taking our city back. It's about protecting the heart of San Francisco. Thank you. Marisa, yeah. for your very difficult job of sitting between the two of us. Please give her a hand.
And I want to thank all of you for caring about the future of where our city is going. When David and David, when we came into office five years ago, it was in the depth of the Great Recession. And what we didn't need at that time was conversations about ideology. What we didn't need at that time were people who were saying, no, we shouldn't do that, no, we shouldn't do that, but not necessarily presenting creative solutions, not trying to problem solve, not trying to bring people together. And I want to thank those of you who worked with so many of us over the last five years to bring us to where we are today. We have come a long way. When I first came in office, when David and I were first in office, we had budget deficits, half a billion dollars, where we had to cut for our poor residents, for our residents who needed health care, for our residents who were really, truly struggling. We now have one of the healthiest budgets around the state. We have one of the healthiest economic pictures around the state when it comes to employment, but, but, we have new challenges today. We have an affordability crisis that we need to tackle. And what we don't need right now is we don't need folks who aren't willing to help work together to bring us together as a community, to help us problem solve, to help us be creative, to help reach out into the diversity of all of our communities and move us forward. I love the fact that the first debate of this season is here at the San Francisco Young Democrats. Because those of you who are young, are young Democrats, after David and I are just footnotes in political history here in San Francisco, you are the ones who are gonna move us forward. And we need to make sure whoever you elect next is going to help create that special sense of possibility. Help ensure that everyone gets to continue to live here. That everyone gets to continue to work here. I would be honored for your support and I ask you to join our movement because we are going to build and continue to build the very special place that is the city of St. Francis. Thank you.